Hello, welcome to our introduction to the Tillett & Haig Interro Guidance System. In this video we aim to provide you with basic operator information. For more advanced information on configuring systems and fault finding, please have a look at our other videos or consult the manual. You'll find links to these on our website. This is the console. It's mounted in the tractor cab and provides the user with a touchscreen interface. It contains a small but powerful computer that performs the complex calculations necessary for image analysis and crop tracking. It connects via this cable to an implement mounted module containing a microcontroller that interfaces with speed and position sensors as well as controlling the electrohydraulic steering valves. The camera, or if required multiple cameras, also connect via this implement module. Before we switch on, let's briefly look at the general principles of operation. You do not need to know this to operate a machine, but you might find it interesting. The system detects live plant material on a soil background by picking out areas that have a high green to red ratio. We have other strategies for non-green crops, but in the interest of brevity, we will assume here that the crop is green. Given that our systems are often used to guide weeding machines, the scene probably also includes weeds, which will also be green and might create quite a confused scene. Fortunately, since we planted the crop and selected the camera properties, we can anticipate what the crop pattern should look like in the image, and we can create a sort of electronic template represented by these green lines. A best fit match between real crop rows and the electronic template provide us with a robust estimate of row position with respect to the camera. The crop and camera properties used to generate these green lines are stored in what we call a configuration file. You can store several different configuration files on a machine to suit different crop and machine geometries. By arranging the camera view to take in several rows, we have lots of data with which to match our computer generated template. This technique can even cope with some of those rows being missing. Since the weeds should be randomly placed, they will not match our template, and provided they do not cover the scene completely, they should not prevent a match being found. It follows from this that it is very important that green template lines match the crop rows as they appear in the live image. The more accurate the match, the better the guidance. The camera is normally mounted on a side shifting part of the implement. The control system side shifts or steers the implement so that the camera and any tools fitted on the frame with it remain aligned with the crop rows. Implement position is therefore maintained independent of tractor position, making the tractor driver's life much easier and less stressful. OK. So now we understand a bit about how it works, we're ready to switch on. We start by pressing the white console button for about a second until it latches on and illuminates. You then get about 40 seconds of screen text as the computer boots up. We have skipped some of this to save time. You then get to the startup screen. This gives you several options, but we want to go straight into the inter-row guidance working screen, so we touch the button labelled inter-row. This is the working screen. It features a live video image and other useful information on system performance. We will take a quick look through some of its features. At the top left is an image quality gauge that indicates how well the template matches the crop rows. If image quality is less than you're expecting, it's worth checking how well the template lines up with the crop. That could just be that the crop rows are not clearly defined. The system usually performs adequately with image quality values down to 
and sometimes even lower. See our tutorial on camera setup for more on this. Top right is a speed bar that should reflect tractor speed. Below that is the fine offset bar. Fine offset is a user determined fixed bias applied to implement lateral position. Fine offset is applied in 10 mm steps by touching the left and right arrow keys. Below the live image is a light bar indicating implement lateral slide position. A red chevron with a vertical bar indicates the system is at maximum stroke. An area to the bottom left of the screen is reserved for system status information. A yellow three-point linkage symbol indicates the implement is raised and when first activated will automatically centre the implement. A red brake symbol indicates the implement has stopped but is still lowered. A red warning triangle indicates the system estimates that lateral position error exceeds 25 millimetres, which should not occur under normal conditions, except briefly when setting off. If the triangle persists, operation should stop until the cause of the pause tracking is found and rectified. The near vertical green template lines should match the crop rows. If they do not, check that the camera pole is vertical and that the implement is at its normal working depth. If they are OK, check that the configuration file or crop height selected on the console are the correct ones for the crop or machine. The view should look like this and not like this, nor should it look like this. The better the match, the better the guidance. So, if the template match is not good, like this, and you want to select a different configuration file or change crop height, press the touchscreen button marked with a spanner, which will take you into the setup screen. The first line is the crop height. Crop height compensates for the distance between crop and camera getting smaller as the crop grows. To move the cursor within this screen, touch the arrow buttons. An item is selected when the cursor moves onto it and the text turns from blue to white. So, to select the small crop height band, we touch the left arrow key button so that the cursor is over small. It has turned white and is selected. Going back to the working screen by pressing OK, we can see that selecting small crop has indeed improved template match and raised the image quality bar. So back to the setup screen. Touching the down arrow key moves us to the second line which lists the configuration files stored on this particular machine. These files contain information about crop and machine geometry. A summary of that information for each camera is listed in the middle of the screen. If it does not match your situation, select a configuration file that does. If such a file is not loaded, a new one can be created using the configuration editor. This is a subject of a further tutorial. So, in this case, a file called Turo Lettuce is currently selected. If we want to work on Foro Lettuce, we move the cursor over the name of the appropriate file and it turns white and is selected. Press OK again to get back to the working screen and we can see the machine is now looking to match a four row template. So now we're all set up and ready to go. To start work, lower the implement into the crop approximately aligned with the crop rows. Set off cautiously at first, but once you're confident that guidance is reliable and the fine offset is correctly adjusted, you can speed up. Guidance is normally within one centimeter up to speeds of 10 kilometers per hour, though much higher speeds are possible. At the end of the day, you might want to check the area you have covered. Go into the setup menu, then touch the top right button again. This time it'll be labeled with a spanner plus plus symbol to reach a screen giving status and diagnostics information. 
The top three lines give the software version, the system total running time and total area. Below that, under the heading Current Job, you will find a log of the time in the area covered since the last reset. If you want to reset this log ready for the next session, use the arrow keys to move the cursor over New Job and touch the Return button to reset these values. As you can see, there are several other settings and tools available in the screen. We will cover more of these in other videos. To exit this status and diagnostic screen, press the loop back button. And now, finally, when you are fed up and want to go home, you need to power down. Exit the working screen by pressing the home button. Confirm that you want to exit and then from the home screen, press the power down button, which will save any data from that session. We hope you found this video informative and remember to look out for our other tutorials. Thanks for watching.